Hey you guys, this is Scotty Temple, lead singer of Southbound Train. I want to welcome you guys to our YouTube channel. He played at the Catfish Festival this year, just getting his career going. He's played at a couple of local bars and he's covering a Frank Foster song. Here's Scotty Temple. How y'all doing tonight? When I was probably around 13, um, I decided I wanted to pick up a guitar. I always like, kind of like singing, but mainly was to play guitar. And dad would always kind of pick on me and like, what is that racket coming out of your bedroom? You need to quit, man. And it kind of drove me to be like, hey, I want to sing and I want to play. And my friends would always, you know, whenever we get together, we'd have this little bonfire as kids, you know, being 14, 15 years old, and we'd all sit around and I'd break out the guitar and a couple of my buddies played and we all played guitar. and. Uh, it kind of grew as time went on and um, got to where we were playing parties, man. I couldn't go anywhere that, hey man, break your guitar out. And then one night we showed up at a little place called Cougarville out there in, uh, in Tinsall Parish. And a uh, buddy of mine was playing. He was like, hey man, you need to get up here and play with this band and play this song, let them back you up. And I was like, man, I ain't doing that. And uh, I got that first taste of, of people reacting back and it was like, man, this is what I was made to do. This is what I want to do. I want to play music. It's just the reaction of people. And that drew me in there because I want to see people happy. I want to see them smile. There was a couple bands that, you know, I, I they'd let me get on stage and play a little guitar and sing with them. Uh, Trademark was one of them. Uh, Charles Derrick, good friend of mine. And uh, they asked me about opening up for them. And I was like, man, I don't know about getting in front of people. And just sure enough, going out there and doing like an hour set or whatever, but you know, hey, let's just try it and see what happens. And um, that's when I really started focusing on my voice. Everybody uh, had a friend that said I sang out of my nose. I was like, what are you talking about I sing out of my nose? They grab my nose and <laughs> I started learning, hey, there's there's some things to this. It didn't just you jump up and sing. There's there's a little bit of, a little bit of an S to it. And uh, that's when I really, I guess, started focusing on my voice and trying to be better. I was so used to going by the beat of my own drum, you know, whether I was playing the music right or not, I was playing it. And I just kind of went with that flow and it was like a quick learning curve. Hey dude, you gotta straighten your stuff up. <laughs> you were messing up 90 miles an hour. And uh, it was, I guess I've always liked the adrenaline rush. I've always liked going fast in race cars and riding in the mud and just having an adrenaline rush. And I guess that's kind of one of the things that really stuck in there was the rush of it. Man, I don't know all the lyrics of these songs. I got a little iPad down here with a cheat sheet on it. And it's it was just the rush of it. it was, I kind of just enjoyed the snot out of it. <laughs> and there was a little local band around Monroe, Louisiana called Southbound Train. Um, it consisted of uh, a couple of my friends, uh, J.P. Richardson, uh, which is one of the ones that actually was co-writer in Outlaw Ways Ain't Gone. Um, <laughs> it's kind of funny. I called, I knew the guy that owned the bar, Bobtails, where they were playing that night right there in Winsboro, and it was actually after the Captures Festival uh, that they have there in Winsboro and uh, JP asked well are you any good I was like well man I don't know we'll find out I mean I like playing and singing I, I'll try not to let you down and uh, time went on some of the band members left they you know family got involved kids got involved it was just a fun thing to do on the weekends for them and uh, it was something I was stepping out into it was like hey I've never played with a band before and JP called me he was like hey dude our lead singer just left you want to sing I was like Sign me up, <laughs> I'm ready for it. So that's kind of how that all come into play and it's grown from there. Um, I was actually filling up with fuel, getting ready to go to work. <laughs> and it was on a uh, on a Sunday evening, I was getting ready to go back wherever we was working at. And uh, I was kind of stunned and it kind of took me by surprise. I was like nervous, wasn't sure that I could pull it off, <laughs> didn't know that I could do it. I never really just, been on the stage with a lot of people in front of me and uh, just a lot of nerves. I knew it was gonna be fun, but I knew I had a lot of stuff to overcome to, to get to that point where I'd be comfortable standing on stage. From my personal standpoint and growing things in the future, I never would have even imagined we were in the place that we're at now. You couldn't have told me two years ago we'd be doing what we've done and, and got to meet some of the awesome people that we've met and that have just genuinely cared about us and helped us. <laughs> the way I met Empire, we, uh, which I was just talking to Mac about this the other day, but uh, I was sitting in the shop and I seen that, you know, the hub had come into play and I was like, 
and they got an open mic. Dad had said somebody there. They got an open mic night going on tonight. I was like, Dad, I got so much stuff to do in this shop. I ain't got time to go do an open mic night. And he was like, just go do it, son. Go, go for it. And I said, well, all right, well, let's go. So we all jumped in the truck. And there was a there was a few folks around. I was like, man, what am I getting into? Oh well, let's just have fun with it anyways. And I started sitting there and playing and jamming and dad was hollering back, hey dude, do some Lincoln Park. And I was like, what? Whatever, let's go for it. And that was the time that Matt and Amanda had walked in. And I was like, I don't know who these people are, but they look of importance. And Matt was just in the back, just kind of grooving with it. And Mac was just sitting there smiling ear to ear. And I didn't really know quite how to take it. And Matt and them come up and was like, hey, what's your name, son? I was like, Scotty, <laughs> what a new wrong. <laughs> and they said, no, nah, man, you sound amazing. You sound good. And I was like, blushing and freaked out and everything else. They're like, you want to go back on the big stage and let's see what you got? I was like, I've been singing for an hour. <laughs> Ain't got much left. <laughs> but we did and uh, they just took me with open arms and were just like, hey man, you got something. And I was like, really? <laughs> I was kind of I was kind of excited by that point and they just were just jam up good people from the start. I could just tell a good vibe from them. Come to find out, they were the owners of the hub, which was the place we were doing this open mic night at. And uh, Mac didn't really say a whole lot, Miss Amanda. And uh, we walked outside and we were just chatting and she said, well, where do you want to go with your music? I was like, we'll go as far as I can go with it. I mean, I don't know how we're going to get there. I don't know. You know, we're kind of stale in the cover band scene right now. And we need to really change some things to be able to get to that position. But that's always been my dream is to go to the top, be the best that we can be. And uh, she said, well, might just have some for you. Have you ever heard of Empire Media Management? I was like, nope, but I want to know about them. <laughs> and uh, so we just kind of went from there that Matt and Amanda have opened up so many doors that would have never been possible by myself. I mean, um, they brought in some amazing people that helped. We got Heath and Ryan, they, they do all our video work and they do such a fantastic job at it. Um, all the doors that, you know, like with Jim Riley and Sean Neff and Eric Wallace, I never would have met these people if it weren't for Matt and Amanda. And they were just, for some reason, they were just so good to me. And I don't know why, but I love them for it and I thank them for it. And as far as like Eric, man, he, uh, he was a childhood friend of Amanda, which I call her Mac, but uh, they were childhood friends. Eric, he, uh, he grew up right here in Monroe, Louisiana. And he's, Went out and did big things, went out and seen the world. I mean, he's toured with several, several big name artists and uh, been a part of their their teams. And uh, it was a blessing to get to know him. I mean, Eric, whenever he stepped in and he actually came to the hub just to see what we had going on, I was like, man, this is a big shot dude. He gonna come in here and be like, they're good, but uh, it, was just, it was just fast. Eric was kind of like I said before, he was stone faced. Like, I didn't know what this guy was thinking. I was like, man, this dude's gonna hate this. And it wound, it turned out he was just nothing but good words, nothing but good to say. And I was like, man, this is, this is awesome. Eric Wallace, hey, Monroe, Louisiana, born and raised. Uh, I, I heard Scotty and the boys play at the hub and I knew right away that, you know, it was something special. They had a different sound, a different, you know, a different feel and I felt it and I know that other people feel it and they feel it and that's all that matters. I know they are gonna be super successful. So I called Jim Riley, a friend of mine, the drummer from uh, Rascal Flats. He loved it. He introduced me to Sean Neff, which I had never met, which is like the the coolest guy ever. And he's, he's a Grammy award-winning engineer, uh, producer and with Amanda's uh, ability to put them on the radio, I mean, there's no way they cannot succeed. Um, and Eric's just a genuine guy. I mean, he he really pushed the envelope for me because I didn't realize that that would impact, our music could impact people that way. And that was just another push why we should get away from the covers and go for our own original music. Just, just seeing the connection that just Eric himself had with it it give me the nudge to want to shoot for the stars. People tell you all the time, hey, we're going to do this for you, we're going to do that for you, and it's like, all right, appreciate it, man. And you go on, but Eric actually, he come through and he was like, man, I'm telling you, he was a man of his word. He said, man, 
y'all are gonna go places. We're gonna do something here. So our little trip to Nashville that we took, we uh, me, I always gotta get up at the butt crack of dawn because we, we go on the road. We got to leave at like three in the morning. We got to go. <laughs> we ain't got time to be dilly dallying around. I want to get rested when we get there. But we uh, we took off. We left the house. Everybody met us at about five thirty that morning. Like I said before, we, me and the guys, there were some new members in there and we didn't really know each other that well. We knew each other, but we were just learning some, even like Trey. Trey had just come on the team with us and uh, we were gonna learn each other on a level we had not gotten to learn each other yet. And uh, we took our little, I think it was eight or nine hour drive and went on up there to Nashville. And we were all nervous, like a bunch of little kids freaking out, going into Chuck E. Cheese or something like, oh man, this is finna be wild. And uh, when we showed up, we didn't know how to take Jim or Sean or any of them. And I was like, uh, these famous people? Ain't nobody. It's gonna be scary. <laughs> get your war paint on, get your, get your face going. And uh, turns out, man, they were jam up good people. Um, fantastic to work with. It was just easy to work with them. I mean, they were just human beings like we are. Really, really excited and ready for the world to hear what we have in store for them. Ready to see their reactions. and how well they take to the songs, because there's gonna be a song for everyone in all six of these new tracks that we're putting out that we recorded in Nashville with Sean and Jim. All right, guys, thank you y'all for tuning in on our YouTube channel. Um, don't forget, like and subscribe, drop in the comments. If you got any questions about us, you know we are moving dirt and we're singing music and we're a bunch of country boys and all this, you wanna know a little bit about us, drop it down in the comment section below and uh, y'all take care.